The ultimate goal of RimWorld is to survive, build a colony and thrive. On a mechanical level, RimWorld is about problem solving and micromanagement, but its greatest victory is the way its emergent narrative creates a sense of morality. Your role as unseen god to your group of colonists allows you to shape the feel, tone and themes of their survival. Is this a story about how a group of outsiders came together, arriving at the realisation that it wasn't the home they were looking for, having already built a new one together? Maybe it's about how, in the face of survival, sane, rational individuals will literally eat each other in an every man for himself tale about what horrors humans must inflict simply to survive. Perhaps it's the origin story of the biggest drug cartel in the galaxy, from humble smoke leaf fields to a large scale interstellar yayo empire. The truth is, it's all these things and more. Rimworld is full of victories and tragedies where a win state isn't the priority. Losing isn't a failure, it's the twist in your tail or a point at which ultimatums of never again are created. To load a previous game when you lose a colonist is to derail your own story. Having a large population isn't necessarily a win in Rimworld. And while greater numbers mean greater productivity, each colonist is complex and individual. One colonist may be a drug addict, sparking conflict with a teetotaler, one may take issue with prosthesis, while another firmly believes in modification. While statistics play a key role in what colonists can and can't do, the real alchemy is how they work in tandem within RimWorld's highly reactive gameplay systems. When Bioshock was released in 2007, it was praised for its critique of objectivism through its narrative, and to a lesser extent its gameplay. Bioshock's use of Ayn Rand's ideology, right down to the naming of its sort of protagonist, was a focused negative attack against it. RimWorld's approach is different. What RimWorld does skillfully is force you to explore different moral philosophies without reminding you that it's doing so and without judgement. It asks you to define what is valuable in your society. You could play the game as vegetarian pacifists, but as soon as you come into contact with pirates, whose sole source of income is plundering, you're forced to make difficult choices. And then there's the idea that prosperity itself is subjective. If you have a technologically advanced society of a labour class and a science or intellectual divide, tensions are sure to form. Equally, you could build an egalitarian society with a focus on happiness and leisure over rapid expansion and advancements. What makes the morality of RimWorld ring so true is its nuance. Many games have attempted morality system, the result often being somewhat binary. A set of devil horns or a halo, kill an innocent puppy or save it. These choices were backed up by limited reward systems. Being bad may make the game easier in the short term, but also good actions will give you a good ending or simply provide a payoff that takes longer to arrive. In RimWorld, your rewards for actions can be penalties in context. By using simple graphics and pen and paper style character sheets with bios and pre-existing relationships, RimWorld asks you to use your imagination. When a colonist loses an arm in a mining collapse, you're asked to imagine it how they feel and how others now see them. Keeping a miner with only one arm to work might be an indulgence for a colony that needs everyone to pitch in equally if it's to survive. From a gamey perspective, the correct thing to do to achieve victory would be to harvest his organs and sell them. With the money you could buy vital supplies and sooner or later the game will generate another colonist to join you anyway. But seriously, think about that. You're making the call to harvest the organs of a functioning person who you could have taken care of to get ahead in a game. It's not the wrong choice, but it's an entirely Darwinian one, and you can justify it in the context of survival. Now that's what I would call a real moral choice in a game. If you like this video, you can check out my slightly more detailed write-up on heypoorplayer.com, where you'll also find loads of other video game related goodness. You can also subscribe to our channel for more content, or, you know, spam the comment section with Harambe memes. I've been Jamie for Hey Poor Player, see you next time.